I love dusty stress balls. I only want to be with you. That was my favourite hit of hers. Uh, hello, I I'm Ivan Kirby. Uh, this is Joan Crawford. And this is Trog. Now, I do want to stress that those are the characters on my T-shirt, not the names of my moobs. Uh, they're called Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. But that's another story. Uh, but tonight I am here to tell you the story of how Joan Crawford, uh, the most glamorous star in the history of Hollywood, and a trog, a prehistoric troglodyte from the dawn of time, or more accurately, a man in a rubbish mask and two skimpy bits of fur, got together. The hero of this story uh, is a film producer called Herman Cohen. Uh, his first success was with a film in 1957, which you've probably heard of, uh, even if you haven't actually seen. It's called I Was a Teenage Werewolf. It's about a teenage werewolf. Uh, he followed that up with a film about a teenage Frankenstein monster, but it was called I Was a Teenage Frankenstein. Uh, so we can discuss later how accurate that title is. Um, and after that, he made a film about a teenage vampire. Have we got any guesses what that film might have been called? I'm a teenage vampire. Bad luck. It was called Blood of Dracula. <laughs> Dracula's not even in it. Uh, but that title was a means of cashing in on the first ever colour Dracula film, which had been made by Hammer Films in Britain and was a phenomenal success. Uh, between the late 50s and the early 70s, Britain was the world's epicentre of horror film making. It's one of the things that I'm most patriotic about, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, so in 1959, Herman Cohen came over here uh, to make a film and he made a film called Horrors of the Black Museum. And like a lot of horror films at the time, it was sold with a really crappy gimmick to pull in the punters. This one had something called Hypno Vista, which sounds very exciting. It was actually just sort of a prologue uh, by a supposedly world-renowned hypnotist, and it probably did send some of the audience to sleep just because it's really fucking boring. Uh, the film itself, though, was a massive success because it was probably the most gruesome film ever made up to that point. It has a very famous opening scene where uh, a beautiful woman receives a pair of opera glasses in the post as a gift from uh, an unknown admirer, puts them out her eyes, spikes shoot out and pierce her eyeballs. It's not a romantic comedy, just to clarify for you. Uh, after that, Herman Cohen made a film which, to my mind, is one of the greatest achievements in the history of cinema, called Conga. It's basically a cheap rip-off of King Kong, but in an absolutely bizarre way. It's about a uh, mad scientist who's been lost in the African jungle for years, uh, comes back to Britain with a chimpanzee and a mysterious growth serum that he's been given by the natives. Uh, this film has two of, to my mind, two of the greatest lines in the history of cinema. Because one thing that happens is that the mad scientist injects this growth serum. Well, first of all, what he does is he makes giant plants with it. These plants, they look like huge black veiny penises with tongues. It's quite distracting. Uh, and then... Uh, and then he injects it into his gorilla. The gorilla... The, sorry, the chimpanzee, it turns into a man in a particularly tatty gorilla suit. Uh, and he sends this gorilla out to uh, kill his enemies. We'd all do it if we could, let's be honest. Uh, and his assistant, who's uh, in unrequited love with him, confronts him at the breakfast table one morning about these murders he's responsible for. And she says to him, what, we, what are you having with your poached eggs? Murder? <laughs> It's one of the greatest lines in the history of cinema, but it's not quite as good as the line that happens later in the film. When the gorilla's been given an overdose of the growth serum, he's grown through the roof of the house. He's the size of Godzilla, and he's going to attack downtown Croydon. And, and a police inspector, panicked by this, says, fantastic, there's a huge monster gorilla that's constantly growing to outlandish proportions, loose in the streets. It's just another day on the job. 
The film is also notable for this curious, ambiguous relationship between the mad scientist and his gorilla. A couple of lines in the film are, please leave, I want to be alone with Conga. And we know each other much better than the world suspects, Conga. It's all, apart from that, it's all left to the imagination. Around the same time, Joan Crawford, one of the greatest stars in the history of Hollywood, was reviving her career in Hollywood uh, with the film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, the greatest film ever made, uh, alongside Betty Davis. Uh, after that, she, they both got cast in a lot of horror movies. Uh, Joan Crawford got cast in a particularly great one called Straight Jacket, which uh, climaxes with one, one of the most mind-bogglingly symbolic moments in cinema history, when 60-year-old Joan Crawford has a fight sequence with a, with a younger actress dressed up as a young Joan Crawford. That's just, I mean, that's just, that's just aging. That is just life, isn't it? <laughs> but um, she, th she signed on in 1967 to come over to Britain to make a film with Herman Cohen called Berserk. Now, that's one of those sort of all-purpose horror movie titles. It could mean absolutely anything. In this case, it's about a series of brutal murders taking place in a travelling circus. So they could have at least called it Berserkus. I mean, come on. <laughs> but... Um, the, Joan Crawford plays the ring mistress of the circus called Monica Rivers. Monica Rivers, that's, that's just like a drag race name waiting to happen, isn't it? Her greatest line in the film is where she says, I'm running a circus, not a charm school. Uh, but there's this bit later on in the film where her daughter gets expelled from boarding school for bad behavior, and they pass up the golden opportunity that was there the headmistress to say, I'm running a charm school, not a circus. <laughs> but the great thing about this film is that um, because it was made in partnership with an actual circus, the actual plot of the film keeps stopping while they bring on actual real circus acts that go for like 10 minutes. And you get like these really enticing sort of 1960s circus acts like Jodie the Wonder Elephant and Phyllis Allen and her intelligent poodles. Then, and then in 1970, Joan Crawford came back to Britain to make the film Trog with Herman Cohen. Uh, the director of the film was Freddie Francis, a man who had a sort of quite a, a split personality career. He's one of the most um, respected cinematographers in the history of, of British cinema. He sort of photographed films like um, Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, The Elephant Man for David Lynch. But as a, he also had a career as a director, which he spent making films with titles like Dr. Terror's House of Horror and Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Trog isn't quite his trashiest movie ever. That's one he made later on with Herman Cohen called Craze, uh, which features Hollywood tough guy Jack Palance um, as a bisexual... Uh, it's a very camp bisexual man who sacrifices women to this extremely grotty looking supposed African idol uh, in order to make his antique shop more successful. <laughs> <laughs> But Trog, I mean, because it, uh, Trog looks amazing, it was filmed in the Peak District. There are these amazing shots in it of Joan Crawford against this dramatic uh, Peak District scenery, wielding a shotgun, which is fantastic. But um, the, what the film is essentially about, she, Joan Crawford plays uh, a lady scientist called Dr. Brockton. She doesn't have a first name. She's too important for that. <laughs> and because she's a lady scientist, she doesn't wear a white coat. She wears a coat in a very fetching shade of powder blue. Uh, and um, when a uh, prehistoric troglodyte is thawed out of a block of ice in um, a local cave, she takes it on him under her wing, raises him as her own child, and tries to adjust him to the modern world. There's this wonderful moment in it where he, he, he's given various toys to play with. He smashes up this sort of like spaceship toy and tenderly embraces this little dolly in a pink dress. How lovely to see an actual prehistoric troglodyte who doesn't feel bound by gender roles. But, <laughs> but there, as, as so often in life, there's a local fundamentalist Christian busybody who 
disapproves of Trog, thinks he's an abomination, tries to kill him, uh, but in fact just sets back all the work that Joan's done. Uh, Trog goes on a rampage through a pu picturesque English village. He throws the greengrocer through his window. He impales the local butcher on his own hook. He kidnaps a little girl as she's sliding down a slide. And I'm sorry for the spoiler here, but the film is 48 years old. He gets, in the end, he gets blown up. And the film climaxes. The film ends with a reporter trying to ask Dr. Brockton for a comment. She bats his microphone out of the way and walks out of the shot. And that was the last film that Joan Crawford, one of the greatest stars in the history of Hollywood, ever made. Yay. What a way to go. <laughs> well, thank you. You've been marvellous. Thank you very much. Good night.